Our modern lesson is from God is Still Speaking by the Reverend Candace Cello. Hear these words. Those who think the Bible is the be-all and end-all of what God taught us worship not a living God, but a dead, leather-bound one. God does not live in a book. The Bible has not swallowed God whole and spit God back at us in the form of rules and regulations. To believe that is to make the same mistake the Pharisees made, failing to perceive God is doing a new thing. We must constantly remind ourselves that God spoke before the Bible was written, and God continues to speak even though the canon is closed. May God bless the hearing of these new words. Amen. I'm so grateful to so many people who make worship happen here at Cathedral of Hope. And with that, I'm going to invite you to pray a blessing so that as we pray, God might still speak to us this day. Let us pray. So good and gracious God, the God of our ancestors and the God who shows up now in this world, in this moment, this God that still speaks and beckons us to hear, I pray, God, that we might have open ears and open lives and open moments, that we might see your Spirit speaking clearly to us this day. And with that, God, I pray now that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, I pray that prayer at the very beginning of every sermon, and I pray it because I invite the Holy Spirit to speak through me. And by that, what I mean is that I invite this living spirit of a living God that was so evident in the scriptures, both the Hebrew and Christian scriptures, this God that was present in the lives of others might show up and be present in my life. And in my life and in my words, transform whatever is in my head or is in my heart and transform them into words that speak truth to you and perhaps speak truth to me. Truth that has its being in who we are. I I truly believe that that was the gift of the Holy Spirit that was bestowed upon the church, those first gatherers as they gathered in that upper room on that day of Pentecost. It was that Holy Spirit that gave them words of utterance, words of truth, words that would speak to the hearts and minds of a generation who were looking for a relationship with God. And that same Holy Spirit is the spirit of freedom and truth and love that comes to us this day if we follow this God that Jesus preaches about. And that's what this whole sermon series has been about, is about a God that we can believe in. A God that shows up in the life of Jesus. A God that manifests God's self in the world more than 2,000 years ago to a generation a bit like ours that is looking for something more, looking for a God to believe in. A God that wasn't contained just in a temple or a God that was just contained for those who had power. A a God that in somehow had become a, a God that was unapproachable. To a God that was real. A God that had flesh and blood, a God that was incarnate in Jesus Christ, and a God that continued to be present even after Jesus by this gift, the power of the Holy Spirit. A God we can believe in. And over these last few weeks, we've talked about this God that we can believe in, this invitation that we have been given to have relationship with God, a God of love, a God of compassion, a God of kindness. In some ways, a God that is quite contrary to the way in which the church preaches today. We so often hear of this God of judgment and hatred and discrimination, a a God that is somehow exclusive. But this God that Jesus encourages us to know and to believe in is a God of inclusion, a God that is with us. It is that Emmanuel, this God that is ever-present And as we look through scriptures and as we think about this God that is still speaking today, we we realize that in our sacred text, we hear God's voice being manifest by human beings. Yes, human beings. I have so many friends and people who tell me that that the Holy Bible is, is, is actually God's fingerprint writing every single word. 
But my understanding of God is not a God who who just writes things down for us, but a, a God who is interpreted through our own human experience. And as human beings, sometimes we're a little fallible. And sometimes we write from a place of bias. And sometimes what we find in our sacred text is our understanding of who God is more than the actual writings of a God who came down through the sky and who wrote every single word. That God who spoke through generations past is a God that is still speaking. And as the United Church of Christ, we believe in a God who is still speaking. A God who was speaking at the very beginnings of creation. A God that spoke through the prophets and the elders and the leaders of the early peoples. A God that was present in Jesus. A God who spoke to Mary and Joseph in the narrative of the nativity. A God that spoke to the disciples and the apostles. A God that spoke to the apostle Paul, who persecuted the church and who later became the greatest advocate of the church. A God that spoke to Peter when he said, On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. A God that has spoken after the final letter and dot of the book of Revelation. Friends, if we believe only in a God that is contained in this sacred text called the Old Testament and the New Testament, if we believe that that is the only way that God has spoken to God's people, if we believe that the book begins and ends God's voice in the world, then we are missing out on the fullness of God's voice in the world today. It was Reverend Dr. Yvette Flunder who stood in this very place just a few years ago and said that the biggest sin that we have as a church is that we put a back cover on the Holy Bible. And she preached a powerful message here and reminded us that we are the book. Not just the book called the Holy Bible, but that our lives are the book. Our lives continue the story beyond the book of Revelation. And the God that we believe in is a God who still speaks, a God who speaks through science, a God who speaks as we evolve as human beings, a a God who speaks as we learn to love our neighbor, as we love ourselves, a God who continues to speak about this all-loving and inclusive vision of a God of love. That's why here at Cathedral of Hope we say that we are proclaiming Christ through faith, hope, and love. And that we manifest that, we connect people back to this God that we believe in, in order that we might restore relationship with God. And I don't know about you, but that is an urgent mission. It's an urgent vision. It's something that I can get behind because my job as a follower of Jesus is to help others to connect and reconnect with this God that is still speaking, a God who is still present I don't know about you, but I know that there are times in my life where I have heard the voice of God. It's almost been audible. And there have been other times when I've had to face decisions and in prayer and in meditation, I've heard God tell me, lead me, guide me, that I might follow in the way. It's so easy sometimes to follow in the way of culture and the the way of others, but, but God is still speaking God is still present. God is still with you and me from age to age, from generation to generation. And as we heard in our modern lesson and in the epistle today, Paul's letter to the early church at Corinth, we're reminded that the, the, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit is continually interpreting and helping us to discern God's voice amongst all of the other voices in the world. And that as followers of Jesus, our job is to be in tune with that God, that God that is still speaking. The God who didn't end God's voice at the end of the book of Revelation, but a God who still reminds us and still speaks to us. Yes, there is great value in our sacred text, great value in in some of the moral teachings and the leading and, and history of God's people. But if God is still present, then God evolves with us. And we evolve with that God. God is still speaking. Can you hear God's voice today? 
Do you hear God's voice through the music and the prayer? Do you hear God's voice when you celebrate communion at your home every single Sunday? Do you hear God's voice in the still speaking of your own mind and ear as you go into your workplaces, as you go into your world, as you volunteer, as you encounter people along your journey? Do you hear God still speaking? God speaking to us to remind us of the oppressed and the marginalized. God still speaking to us in this Black History Month to remind us that black lives matter. God still speaking to us to know that this job of our faith is not done, but rather is still evolving from generation to generation. Our work as the generation of God's people in this world today is to help connect and reconnect people to this God that we can believe in. A God that in some ways has been so disenfranchised from the human world by our own bias by our own theology, by the ways in which we have created God in our image rather than allowed God to be made or us to be made in the image of God. And in order for us to hear that still speaking God, we must be open to the wisdom and the power of the Holy Spirit that transforms us and changes us in the twinkling of an eye that we might see the injustice in our world, that we might speak truth to power, that we might enable our lives to align themselves as closely with Jesus as possible and to cast out, to cast out the ways in which the world and the church have somehow, somehow co-opted and corrupted this word of God. Just before coming down to preach today, I was engaged in a conversation with somebody on LinkedIn. I had congratulated Mayor Pete on becoming secretary And the person decided to write to me and said, oh, I see you're another one of those who have fallen away from God's grace. And I said to him, what what did you mean? And of course, I knew what he meant. And he said that the King James Version of the Bible was the God's word for humanity. And I know at that point sometimes that when somebody says that to me, that they've somehow bought into this ideology that God is contained just in the Bible and don't understand that God is still speaking. God is still evolving. God is in you as much as God is in me. I had friends, it was hard to keep my call at that moment, but in that moment, I had to understand that this is the way that the church has gone, and so often that is why people are leaving the church. (laughs) I believe in a God who is still speaking and is speaking to this generation, to this church, to this people, not only to proclaim Christ through faith, hope, and love, but to help connect and reconnect people to this God of inclusion. It's our mission and our vision, our vision that we might reconnect people to this God that is still speaking, this God of inclusive love, and that in connecting people back to that God, our lives are changed. Our lives are transformed. And it only happens if we are free enough to move beyond just that which is contained in the 66 books or so of the Holy Bible and contained in the book of your life, the book of your experience, the God that is still speaking to you and speaking to me. I believe that's a God we can believe in. I also believe that's a God that we can trust in. Because when we grow in likeness to Christ, growing in Christ's love, growing in Christ's peace, growing in faith, hope, and love, then we become Christ-like in all our ways. May the Holy Spirit fall afresh on each and every one of us. I want to close my sermon today with the words of the United Church of Christ, the denomination that we are a part of. And they put it this way. Today, under one collective identity, we can enthusiastically lift up the United Church of Christ as a welcoming, justice-minded Christian community. At a time when religion is too often portrayed as narrow-minded and exclusive, we are raising our voices for an alternative vision. Where God is all-loving and inclusive, where the Church of Jesus Christ welcomes and accepts everyone as they are, where our mind is nourished as much as our soul, 
where Jesus the healer meets Jesus the revolutionary, where together we grow a just and peaceful world. God is still speaking, friends. Are we listening? God bless you. Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. Amen. Here.